Hey folks, Pastor Josh here. We're going to continue our study in the book of James. We're in the book of James. We're now in chapter 3. Last video, we had finished chapter 2, and we are now going to be in chapter 3. And chapter 3 is, some, uh, is a very good uh, section of scripture about what we speak, how we speak, and basically what's in our heart. So it's a really good uh really good scripture to to really put into put into practice and really really um help us to understand that what's in our heart can come out our mouth the scripture says the, out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh so what we're talking about is the tongue and how the tongue and what our what we say can affect uh, how other people view Jesus, how other people view us, and how other people view Christians. So, and and it can ultimately affect us as well as them, detrimentally. And uh, so, let's go there. Let's go to James chapter three. This is one that uh, I've studied out. I've preached it. Actually, the twelve verses of this chapter, the first twelve verses, I preached uh, pretty recently, probably about four months ago, and. Um, it was really good. So we're going to go there. We're going to we're going to talk about it. We're going to divulge on it. Now we're not going to we're not going to uh, rush through this. We're going to we're going to linger in this chapter because this chapter is very important to understand. Now it says here, my Bible, modern English version, uh, has the heading of the tongue. So chapter three, verse one, says this, my brothers. Now many of you should become teachers knowing that we will receive the greater judgment. We all err in many ways, but if any man does not err in word, he is a perfect man and able also to control his whole body. Now, there, there is something that I want to bring out here. James is basically saying here in the verse first, my brothers, not many of you should become teachers knowing that we will be we will receive a greater judgment. Why would James say that? That that kind of stuck out to my mind. Why would James say some of you should not be, become teachers? Uh, the NIV says some of you should not presume to be teachers. Okay. Why why is that? Why is that? Is that because there is, maybe they don't know the word like they should, maybe they don't understand it like they should, therefore they cannot teach it effectively? Uh, is it possibly because they are doing the word in such a way that they are trying to uh, get something from that or something from those in whom they teach? Uh, maybe they... Maybe they pervert it in order to get uh, personal gain. Uh, we don't know. We don't know. But he says, many of you should not become teachers. Many of you should not become teachers. Knowing that we shall receive a greater judgment. Why is that? Why, why would we receive a greater judgment? Well, one of the things that I've learned is that people who are in uh, under sitting under me as a teacher I am expected to understand the word in a greater way than they do <clears throat> in that I am supposed to then try my best to bring a fresh light on the scripture to help them understand something about it that they don't already know so my position as a teacher and, and, and any anyone's position as a teacher would be that we would we would try to study it out we would try to get a, a greater understanding that we can convey something else to someone that they don't already know and it says that we, we will be have we will receive a greater judgment why because people's eternity is at stake when we teach if we teach something wrongly, whether we know it or not. And I think that was the case here. Some of them were teaching it wrongly, knowing they were teaching it wrongly for whatever. Um, but 
we must understand that we are held to a higher account because we are we hold people's eternities in our hand something we say could push people away from the cross or push them toward the cross depending on how we convey christ and how we convey the word of god so we will be held to a higher account than someone who does not uh that is not a teacher that is learning okay we all err in many ways but if any man does not err in word he is a perfect man and able also to, to control his whole body when i think about and james goes down and talks about this in a, in a greater way but when i think about when he says we do not err in word what we use to form words we use our mouths right so this is where the the uh, the heart gets doesn't get its full due full blame okay uh, James is talking about the tongue but really we need to talk about the heart because if we are spewing out things that we shouldn't we're spewing out things that are not true or doing for our own personal gain according to the you know uh, as far as the word of god goes uh, our heart really is what's what's at to blame here because the bible says uh, out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh so king james says speaketh or niv speaks or modern English version says speaks but in any case whatever's in our heart comes out our mouth now if that if if your heart is right if your heart is uh, one that is uh, fully uh, fully turned turned toward God and fully doing what God wants you to do that then is going to come out of your mouth things that are holy things that are righteous things that are that are what God would want us to bring across so understand that uh, the heart here is what we really want to look at, what our heart looks like and what our heart is. And there are some examples that uh, things that happen in our heart. And I, I, when I preach this, I thought about uh, every idle word the Bible says will be judged. Um, every, every, everything we think, everything we, we say will be judged from, from our voice to our heart. So things like, have you ever been in a store and you've been in the the uh, line and maybe the cashier or the checker is new maybe she uh, maybe someone's standing there because they need a price check or maybe someone's standing there because they just the cashier needs help doing something on on the uh, register and there's three four people in front of you and you're waiting have you ever thought to yourself well this person what the heck is this person's problem? Why is this person taking forever? This person is so stupid. Okay, Have you ever had those kinds of thoughts? Or how about this one? A person comes up to you and starts talking to you that you, you've known for a long time. You don't really care for them. You don't really uh, care for what they have to say, nor do you want to listen to it. But yet you are kind to them outwardly but in, inwardly you're you're saying to yourself i wish this idiot would just get away from me so i could go on to my day why didn't why didn't this idiot just shut up you know uh, have you ever had that i want to submit to you that that is something that comes out of your heart and that's something that will be judged because even though you're not speaking it out and you're being kind it's still there and it's still festering and it's still in your heart and you can be judged for that. You can be judged for that. So make sure that your heart is right before God. God is God is the the greater uh, person than we are. God is. He is. He's greater than we are. He he can he can take situations and turn them upside down for His glory. And He knows where our heart is. He knows what our heart is. He knows where we are in Him. So if you can keep your mouth in check, your heart, your heart's right and your mouth in check, 
He says, you're able to control your whole body. And he goes down and he, he, he describes things in this particular chapter about what he's talking about from verses 3 and following down. He talks about those kinds of examples and what it means. But, but, but understand here what we're talking about. We're talking about the tongue and understand that the tongue gets kind of the short end of the stick because the heart is what's really to blame. And if the heart's not right, that means we've not been doing what we need to be doing. Well, you, you understand? We we don't we need to be doing something better than we've been doing now. Okay. Our decisions, our choices affect our hearts, and our heart affects how we speak, how we act, how we do things. So. Essentially, the tongue is getting the short end of the stick when it's the heart and it's us to blame when things like this happen. Okay? So make sure your heart is right. Make sure your de decisions are before God and that, they, that you understand what God wants you to do. Now, that being said, let's go on. James says, see how we put bits in the mouths of horses that they may obey us and we control their whole bodies. So, what he's saying is, put a, a bit in the horse's mouth, put the tongue down, hold the tongue down, hold the tongue in place. You hold your tongue in place, spiritually speaking, uh, or physically speaking, you hold your tongue and don't speak your mind. Then, uh, it says that if you do that, you can control the whole, your whole body. Now, understand, it's the heart that has to be right first. But there is going to be times when we, our heart is right, but yet we have these thoughts. And we have to then put them down and hold our tongue and allow Jesus to work. And when we do that, we can still control our whole body. We, we, we can still have control over ourselves, self-control, as it talks about in Galatians. Now, now, verse 4, and observe ships. Though they are so great, are driven by a, by and, and and are driven by fierce winds, yet they are directed by a very small rudder wherever the captain pleases. So understand what the, what what the picture is here. What you say, and what you don't say, and how you say things. Your tongue can can virtually uh, direct your future, direct where you're going to go. Because of how you react and, and how you talk to people and how you how you uh, respond to things and react to situations, the way the way you do that can direct your future in the Lord. It'll direct how many and how much uh, impact you have negatively or positively for the Lord because of the fact that. Our heart, it, it all boils down to the heart here. But if, if we are, if we, if we respond to circumstances and situations negatively or positively, that can then bring about either positive uh, outcomes in our walk with Christ or negative outcomes in our walk with Christ. That's where we are held to account. We are at every, every single one of us to some degree is a teacher. To some degree is a teacher. We are teaching people. But maybe you don't sit on a desk or at a desk and teach teach people, but but you are showing people by your very actions who you believe Jesus is and who what you believe the Bible says. So you are in some degree a teacher. So you have to be very, very much uh, in in step with God. You have to be very much in control of yourself and know that God is the only one that can control your mind and your mouth. Okay? So that's my challenge for you today. Do some soul searching. Allow God to control your, your tongue. Make sure your heart's right, that you are uh, what God wants you to be. Allow God to minister to you and allow God to change the, change, change the things that need to be changed in your life and apply them. So until next time, it's Pastor Josh. God bless.